Truth of Mr. Terrell by Rob Bailey. September. Peter. It's our bad luck to have a teacher in this world. But since we're stuck with them, the best we can do is hope to get a brand new one instead of a mean old fart. New teachers don't know the rules, so we can get away with things the old timers will squash you for. That was my theory. So I was feeling pretty ex excited to start this grade. Since I was getting a rookie teacher, a guy named Mr. Tarrapt, right away I put him to the test. If the bathroom pass is free, all you have to do is take it and go. This year, the bathroom were right across the hall. It's always been easy to get out of doing work. I can be really sneaky like that. I take the pass all the time and the teachers never notice. And like I said, Mr. Tarrapt was a rookie with a rookie, so I knew he wasn't going to catch me. Once... Once you're in the bathroom, it's mess around time. All the other teachers on our floor were women, so you didn't have to worry about them br bragging it on you. Grab the bars to the stall and swing. Try to touch your feel. Try to touch your feet to the ceiling. Swing, swing harder. If someone is in the stall, it's really funny to swing and kick in in his door, especially if he's a younger kid. If you scare him bad enough, he might pee on himself a little. That's funny. Or if your buddy's using the urinal, you can push him from behind and push it at the same time. Then he might get a little wet. That's pretty funny too. Some kids like to plug the toilet with big wads of toilet paper, but I don't suggest you try doing that. You can get in trouble. You can get in big trouble. My older brother told me his friend got caught and he had to scrub the toilet with a to to toothbrush. He said the principal made him brush his teeth with that to toothbrush afterward too. Miss Wilson is pretty tough, but I don't think she'll give out that kind of punishment. I don't want to find out either. When I came back into classroom after my fourth or fifth trip, Mr. Chip looked at me and said, Boy, Peter, I'm going to have to call you Mr. Pe 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 Peabody, or better yet, Peter the Peer. You do more peeing than a dog walking by a mile of fi fire hydrant. Everyone laughed. I was wrong. He had noticed. I sat down. Then Mr. Tarrant came over and whispered in my ear. My grandpa used to tell me to tie a knot in it. I don't know what to do. My eyes got really big when he said that. I couldn't believe it, but that, did, but that didn't matter. Mr. Tarrant just went back to the front board and math problem. He was going over. I sat there with my big eyes. Soon I smiled too. What did he say? Marty asked. My desk was right next to mine. Nothing, I said. Ben and Wendy leaned cr across their desk to hear. They sat across from us. Our four desks made up a, made up table number three. Mr. Tip called us by table sometimes. Nothing, I said again. It would be my secret. How cool was Mr. Tip? His reaction was better than being yelled at, at like the old farts would have done. Some kids in my class would have cried, but not me. And somehow, I think Mr. Tip knew I wouldn't. It was his Way of letting me know he knew what was going on without making a huge stink about it. I like that about Mr. Tarrant. He was sure he sure could be funny, and I'm a funny guy. This year, for the first time in my life, I started thinking school would school could be fun. Jessica, Act One, Scene One. The first day of school. I was nervous. Somewhat, the sweaty plumes and dry mouth sent and struck. This wasn't surprising after all. I was coming to a brand new place. My mom and I had just moved all the way from Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean over here in Connecticut. So it was my first first day in Snow Hill School. My mom came to help me get settled. We walked through the class doors and beautiful interways stopped in the main office to ask for directions. A red-haired woman who proved to be expectation or a multitasking greeted us with a smile and slight nod. She did this while the phone rested be between her ear and shoulder, allowing her hands to scribble notes from a conversation she was having in her free ear with a brown-haired lady standing next to her. We waited. My fingers dug into the hard cover of my book. Hi, I'm Mrs. Wilms, the principal. This was brown-haired lady speaking. She looked serious, all decked out in her business suit. Welcome to Snow Hill School. Can I help you with anything? We're looking for Mr. Terrapin, Mom said. 
I'm Julia Wrightman, and this is my daughter, Jessica. We're new in town. Ah, oh, yes. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Let me show you the way. Mrs. Worms lead us out of the office. I glance at the secu security one more time. She would have been a great actor in one of Dad's plays, I thought. My dad directs a small place in California where I used to, where, where I still wanted to be. How are you today, Jessica? Mrs. Wilms asked. Fine, I said, although that wasn't really true. We followed Mrs. Wilms across the lobby upstairs in search of, of my new fifth grade classroom. The hall smells stuffy but clean, like they had just been di disinfected. I wonder if the uh, custodians had done that on purpose to make a show of how clean their school was. I followed Mom down the blue speckled carpet and past the rows of red lockers, where some kids were already unloading new supplies. I could feel all their all their eyes studying the new girl in the town. After the after the sta stairs came the whispers. My face was burned. Here you are, Mrs. Wom said. This is your four. There are four classrooms up here, all fifth grade, two on each side of the hall, with the bathroom right in the middle. Mrs. Wilms pointed as she spoke. That's your classroom, she pointed again. Room 202. Have a, have a good first day. Thank you, Mom said. I just nodded. Act 1, Scene 2. We walked into the classroom. The teacher looked up from his desk and smiled at us. The butterflies in my stomach fluttered fluttered as, as if I were in twelfth a world. Good morning. I'm Mr. Tarrant, the teacher said as Mom and I walked in. He came right over to greet us. Good morning, Mom said back. I'm Julia Reitman, and this is Jessica. I think she's a little nervous being a new student. Mom felt so swollen that I couldn't talk. I settled on returning Mrs. Mr. Tarrant's smile. It was a friendly one. Well, this is my first day, too, so so I guess we'll be trying... We will try to figure things out together, he said. My smile grew. Your seat is right over there at table two. You're with Nathan, Tommy, and Ryan. Being near the window should give you some good reading light. That's a great book you have there, Jessica. I looked down at my book, A Wrinkle in Time. I rubbed my hand over the cover. I really like happy endings, endings I said. Me too, Mr. Terrip said. I'll do my best to give you a happy ending this year. I smile again. I couldn't believe it. My teacher was new, too, and he liked what I was reading. I don't know why, but somehow he made my butterflies disappear, and my things were going to be okay. Luke. I like school. I'm good at it. I get all A's. So when Mr. Tim announced our first math project, I was excited. Dollar worth was crazy. Definitely not a worksheet problem like all the others have ever been given, not even close. We had to assume that letter A was worth one cent. B, two cent, C, three cent, and so on, making the letter Z worth 26 cent. The chance was to find words that equal one dollar when you add up three letter values. Not 91 cents or a dollar and one cent, but one dollar exactly. Mr. Tiff gave us time to get started. He wanted to make sure we understood the project, and he said he wondered who would be the first one to find a dollar word. Uh, I Im immediately made a data table of all letters and their corresponding value. A quick reference for me. Then I started putting down any word, word that came to my mind that had some of the bigger letters and value. Pretty equals 104. Walnut equals 91. Mister equals 84. Then I thought, hey, wait a minute. What if I just tack the number, tack the letter S? Misters equals 103. No good, but very close. I figured this could still be worthable strategy for other words. So there, I was cranking out words, trying to find the first dollar word of the year. When I, when, what I, what do I hear? Peter and Alexa. This is the fourth year Peter's been in my class, and the third time with Alexa. Peter's funny, but sometimes he gets, he gets to be too much. If I'm concentrating on my work, he just wants to joke around. It annoys me, but I like him. He's fun. He's stronger to trouble. He's stranger to trouble. Alexa, on the other hand, is always involved in some girl war. That stuff I don't get. She loves to wear flashy clothes, dress, skirt, 
finds her shoes, and she always has the sources to go to go with them. And she says the world like way too much. Alexa, Alexa isn't a strange stranger to trouble either. She and Peter are a good match. Peter elbowed Alexa. Then I heard him whisper a word to her. That's not even close to a dollar. I thought fifty three. Alexa said, "No good. Try." Were they crazy? They were trying. They were trying out rude words and giggling the whole time. I just knew they were going to get caught. That's no good. E- that's that's no good either. Peter said, "Maybe." What a butthead! As soon as I thought thought it, I knew it was a, it, it was a word worth cal- calculating. Sure enough, butthead equals eighty one. I stacked on the S. There wasn't just one butthead, but two buttheads. Dollar word, dollar word. I just I was just about to call out that I have found one when Peter beat me to to it. I have got a word. He yelled, "But but talks." He stuttered to the board while he was cool. He was the coolest thing sliced since sliced bread and wrote it for the class. But talks, he said. But talks. Peter went on to demonstrate how the word added up to a dollar. Mister Ter- Mister Terrup didn't interrupt. Just as I-, I was about to, the new girl did. But talks is spelled with a K in it. Peter. Jessica said. Peter looked. To Mrs. Tip, sorry, Peter. She is right. Better try it again, and maybe you should choose a different type of word than the ones you have been coming up with. Peter slunk back to his seat. No surprise to me. Mr. Tip knew what Peter was up to the whole time. I raised my hand. Mr. Tip, I have got one. I walked up to the board and wrote butthead. That was followed by a uh, curious of class. Butthead, I said. Butthead. Add up to eighty-one cents. But if we have one, if we have more than one, then we got butt heads, and butt heads is a dollar. Just ask Peter and Alexa. Mister Tip snorted. That's enough, Luke. I must say this isn't a doll. Is this isn't a word I was I was expecting? But nonetheless, it's our first dollar word. Congratulations! Dollar word was best math project ever. We started on Wednesday. Dollar word. And worked worked for three weeks through trial and error, a few strategy that I learned along the ways, and some helpful hints from Mr. Tip. I broke the record for most dollar words. My final poster was covered with fifty-four of them. Mr. Tip looked at my work and smiled. Look, look, this is excellent dollar word. You are dollar word champ. Alexa, I was like, I have this new guy for a teacher. That's so cool. Mr. Chuck was nice. He let us sit in the table, not rows. I was like, "No way! Are you serious?" And like the best, best was I got to sit with my friend Delaney. There was this new girl in our class, Jessica. She wasn't at our table, but I needed to talk to her. I needed to tell her who she could be friends with. She seemed like she could be pretty cool, even though she carried a book around like a teddy bear. I found her at recess. Outdoor recess is hold behind the school. There's a big black black top area with the basketball hoops and hopscotch. There's a playground equipment in another spot, and a large field of running around and playing sports like kickball or football. That's where the gizmo is too, by the edge of the field. I found Jessica sitting alone on the step of the gizmo. She was reading a book. I was like, "What a loser!" But I went up to her. "Hey," I said. "Hi," she said back. "You're Jessica, right?" Yes, I blew a bubble with my gum and sat down. I'm Alexa. I said, "My my friends call me Lexi." I found a compact mirror in my purse and took my rock star purple lip gloss. Then I was like, "Where'd you come from?" We moved from California. The new girl said, "I used to live in California too." I started playing with the stones that lay under my feet. It's always been easy for me to lie when I don't have to look at a, at the person's eye. We moved because, like my dad, got sick and needed the doctors here. I'm sorry, Jessica said. She started playing with the st- stones now too. Listen, I said. Like you're the new you're the new here, so let me help you out a little, if you want. That is, I snapped my gum. Sure, okay. I stopped playing with the stones and got closer to her. What, want a piece of gum? 
No, thanks, she said. Of course not, little Miss Perfect. I put the gum in my purse. That girl, I said, pointing to Delaney across the playground. You can't miss her. She's the fat one, I laughed. But Jessica didn't. That's Delaney. Watch out for her. She's like somebody you don't want to be friends with. But you, don't you sit with her in class? I thought you were friends. I wasn't expecting this. Usually girls just listen and follow along. I blew a bubble and snapped my gum again. Hey, she used to be cool, but like, she's been saying stuff about you, calling him Miss Goody Tissue and Snooty Bookworm. Jessica seemed surprised. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know, she said. Don't worry. I put my arm around her. Stick with me and I'll help you help. I will like help you out. It will be great. Thanks. Thanks. The recess ended. That's how I got the girl. Jeffrey, the kid in my class, are all right. I have to deal with Alexa again. Plus, her feather, boots, and leopard print clothes, and her stupid purse. I wonder what kind of makeup she puts on this year. She is so dumb. She thinks she's a Hollywood star or something. Then there's Luke. I don't mind him. He's just more and serious about school. And Delaney's in my class. She is fat and... And then there's Peter, a wise guy, a total smart alack. I want to tell Turp that Peter spent all his, all his time in the bathroom because he was messing around. But Turp figured it out, even if he was new. He seemed, he seemed smart. I just don't want, want him trying to figure me out. I'm no, I'm no good in school. School sucks. Delaney. School wasn't so great. My teacher seemed and he could be funny too, but none of that matters when you don't have friends. Lexi had done this stuff to me before. One day, she's my friend, the next, she's not. I don't even know why. I'm not mean to her. This year was the worst, though. Things started out fine. Then one day after recess, Lexi started ignoring me, pretending I wasn't there. She, she would talk about things right in front of me and leave me out of the conversation. She started telling her stupid fat jokes. It was horrible. I cried at home a lot. I'm a little heavy, well, bigger, I guess. I don't like saying I'm fat. I don't know why I am. Why I am. I watch what I eat and I, and I don't have any more than the girls at lunch. Mom said I will grow into my body. She's not fat. Neither is my brother Charlie or grandma or grandpa or dad. Grandma says, you have got to have some meat on your bones, girl. Yeah, Grandma, I think. So someone like Lexi can tell fat jokes about me? I don't say anything, though. Grandma doesn't get it. Only Mom understands. And I feel a little better when she reassures me that I, that I will be thin out as I grow. She always tells me that there must be a reason I have been having to deal with this. It's making you a better person, she says. And someday, this experience, experience will help you. That, that will all great. But I wish I could grow into my body now. We live on a farm. My mom grew up here. My gr grandpa, grandma and grandpa live their own house next to ours. They help us run the farm. So my grandma's around a lot and she wanted to know what was wrong with me, why I was crying. Anytime I mentioned Lexi, she would get all mad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into that school and fix that girl, she said. No, Grandma. Why are you even still friends with her? She doesn't know how to treat people well, especially her friends. It's not her fault, Grandma. It's this new girl's fault, I said, sticking up for Lexi the way I always do. A new girl that I can't stand. If you keep telling yourself that, it won't, it won't ever better, it won't get, it won't ever get better, Grandma said. She's a tough woman. The only time I've got a friend, friends, is when I'm in Lexi's group. Nobody wants to be friends with a fat kid. I don't know what to do. Grandma said a prayer with me that night. We knelt by my bed. Dear God, please give Delaney the strength to stand up to these mean girls in school. Or do what you can teach Alexa a lesson. If you made her fat, that would be all right by me. I elbowed Grandma. Oh, okay, she said. I just ask that you provide Delaney with some comfort and direction during these tough times. We, we pray for the good weather to hold up. 
Anna, I didn't say much in school, and I never raised my hand. That would have been an easy way for people to notice me, and I didn't want to be noticed. People can be real mean. That's something Mom warned me about, and my mom knows. Trust me. I didn't have any close friends, and I wasn't looking for any. Mom was my best friend. Not getting noticed was never a problem for me before. I was always quiet, and I behaved. So the teachers left me alone. I kept my head down and looked at the floor a lot. But I'm a good observer. Mrs. Williams, our principal, winks whenever there's some big surprise coming. It's something I noticed a few years ago. If you keep quiet, you have time to look and listen and take things in. At the beginning of the year, the first thing you pay attention to is the classroom. We have a nice room, a big one. There was a whole wall of windows opposite the door. Mr. Chirp's desk was in the corner by those windows. The students' desks were arranged in five tables of four. So right, so right away, I knew we had a teacher who was into teamwork and who probably didn't mind a little talking. Otherwise, we would have been in an old-fashioned world. The front of the room had the blackboard, and the back wall had a whiteboard. The last side of the t- of the room had all our cabinets and a sink, plus a drinking fountain. Most of the room was c- carpet, except for the side by the sink and fountain. Our door was next to the fountain. The other thing, the bigger thing you you pay attention to, is in the mo- beginning a new teacher, especially if he's new, like Mr. Terrell. Right away, I could tell that he was a reader because there was books everywhere in our room. Mom liked that when I to- told her. Mom's like Mom's a library assistant in another school. It's a good job. She has the same schedule I do and it allows her to take some classes at night. She's studying art. Something something she missed out on when she was younger. She's really good at drawing and painting. Mr. Terrapt was young and athletic looking. He didn't have any pictures around his desk, and he didn't wear a wedding ring. Mrs. Newberry from across the hall didn't have a wedding ring either. Neither did Mom. Mr. Terrapt turned out to be different. He noticed me on the first day. It didn't matter that I wasn't raising my hand because he would ha- he would say, "Anna, get ready. I'm calling on you next." Or if we were talking about something, there wasn't one opinion. He would say. Anna, what do you think? He wasn't going to let me hide, hide all year. This made me nervous, but it turned out to be a good thing in the end.